All right, guys, so finally, um, it's going to be the first wash of the GLC 63. The sun's actually just dipped behind the clouds. Looks like it's going to stay cloudy, which is actually just the perfect weather. I don't want anything to particularly dry on the paint. Obviously, it's a bit more ambient temperature in the air. So I'm going to whip you in for the wheels and we're going to do the takeover detail, first wash and a little bit of a wash and chat all in one video. Let's go. So uh, here we go, first wheel, everything's screwed to the touch. Now, if you look at the, at the tires, oh, they're gunky, so I can't wait to absolutely rip through them with undress. But just a bit of an update as well. So the, as you can see, I've actually further customized the SGS 28. So I've took off the outlaw of the gun, which is from MTM. So I've took that piece off, I put my piece on, so the T304. Um, a couple of that I saw a few weeks back on my Instagram kind of post. Now, this is the part that is milled, uh, machine CNC, everything in Switzerland. So it's a super premium part. Now, the drawer on this, oh, it's unbelievable. And of course, my my housing for the nozzle assembly. This is now the nine month or the ninth month that I'm actually testing this for. Um, yeah, so I think we're getting close. This should be hopefully live in the next couple of weeks on the website. Eventually, we're just kind of, I'm double checking the final few bits for the orifices and actual spray patterns just to make sure it's to how I like it. So yeah, let's just rinse this wheel and see the amount of junk we can get off this. <laughs> Just testing, so this is, um, ah, it's weird. So half of it's plastic, and this is like a, it's not, it's not carpeted, but it's like felt, almost. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be washing a car in a white polo top, it's gonna to get absolutely destroyed. Actually, I, I was gonna use, um, obviously, because we knew this car was coming in months and months ago, so I started actually pre-developing certain things. Um, so I've got it in there already, so we've got like a detail spray, a wash, all that sort of stuff, um, good to go. However, I've got like a, a wheel cleaner, like I'm still testing it. I might whip it out, I might not, but again, I'm going to use the Yum wheels now. Oh, immediately, look at that, on the spray, it's probably very hard to see, but it's, it's turned my finger purple instantly so let's see how much stuff we can get off it now the wheels are cool to the touch as all the wheels should be it's one of them days that's just breezy but i can guarantee you i've worked on this style wheel before anyway with the carbon ceramics it is going to pull off a lot of brake dust. Again, that's straight up, so it's not diluted or anything. Again, that's the undress. I'm just still testing out the, the bigger one litre variant. Now, this will be interesting. This will completely knock out all sorts of stuff on the tyre. Yeah, look at that. It's just going brown instantly. Pre-treat the arches. As you normally would. Here we go, first wheel. So as you can see there, just look at that, it's just going a horrible brown colour. Right, what shall we try first? So, oh, the, I've told you this, I love working on SUV vehicles, even though the brakes on this are probably bigger than most wheels on cars. They've obviously overcompensated with a 21 inch forged wheel. Now, like I've always said, my favorite cleaning tool out of the wheel wheel range is obviously the largest wheel wheelie because you can just get more work with it and stuff like that. Now I think, yes, it goes right in. So the biggest wheel wheelie, I would just use this exclusively if I could. Now, you know my car struggles with this. Or maybe I should just get 21 inch wheels on my car just to make it easier. But look at that, it goes right in, 
even behind the caliper, which is a bonus. Yeah. So there's a little bit of purple being pulled, obviously not a lot because it's, it's carbon ceramics, but there'll still be kind of purple um, flex being flashed up on the wheels because again, fallout is mainly generated from, obviously it's, it's generated mainly from your brakes, but still there is st still fallout, believe it or not, flying in the air on the road. So um, yeah, it will, it's, it's still a good wheel cleaner to use because don't forget, uh, 65 or 70% of our formula is actually a wheel cleaning degreaser anyway. So um, only the small part of it is a fallout remover. Whereas the other part, the main part of the wheel cleaner is still safe on pretty much every wheel part, uh, apart from raw, uncoated kind of aluminium wheels. Now, see, I did a bit of overspray there on the panel. There's something on the paint, definitely. It's definitely not coated, but I know when it rained, it, um, it was throwing up a few beads. So let's see if we can see what it is. Again, a new, new, a new variant of the brush. Trialing that out. Preload it. So again, with this wash, I'm not going to go super heavy. It's. Um, I'll see what the time scales are like. Because on this one, for the very first time, I'm quite limited for time. It's already like half six, so I don't want to kind of get back when it's super late. But still, I'm going to see how far I can I can get with this. I might I may have to film. Obviously, this car is going to be washed hundreds of times on the channel. But as early as possible, I'm going to see. I'm going to try and do it all in this video. But because obviously the takeover, I want to kind of flush the arches and all that type of stuff. And obviously just check that there's no dings, any scratches, unsightly things. Because again, this is the perfect opportunity that I can go back to the dealership and actually say, look, you know, you've sold me a car with this on or that on. This is why I like to do the takeover details as soon as possible, because I can see if there's any damage. Fuck, I forgot with the wheel woolly. Go into the arch and just agitate everything you can. Any dust, dirt, bugs. You see, undressing there is also turning extremely brown. I like to just preload the brush. Oh, yeah, look at that. You know, even when I. <laughs> Even when I pick these uh, the car up, you could tell the tires are kind of dressed over the dirt, so it wasn't perfectly clean. So they dressed right over, and this is why this tire dressing literally lasts like two days. It's, it's been dry apart from like an hour, like an hour of rain, but it's just whipped off so quickly, and we haven't even done that many miles in it. This is why the prep is so important. Now this is going to be a good case study. I'm going to rinse this off and I'm going to show you that when you hit it, I mean, this may take me two, three, four hits, depending on what kind of state the tires are in. But I'll show you, can you see how yellow this is now? On the next hit, you're going to see a huge color change. So again, we're going to, we're going to go straight in. We're going to give it no dwell time this time. Reprime the brush. Yeah, look at that. It, you, you, you could just see it, so now it's actually going perfectly white. So actually the undress in this first hit has knocked it all out. Now, only in a little bit of the edge, there's just a tad of yellow, but this hit's going to be enough. So obviously you give it a good seam too, and you will not have to repeat a third hit but this is why now you know i already knew this anyway because i've just said it but just to show you guys that i'm not talking out of my bum this is why tie dressings don't actually last that long because you've just seen just exactly how much craps on the tires so 
what an absolute shame. I've just realized that my microphone wasn't hooked up properly. So I've just been talking, as you can see, I'm doing wheels. I've been talking to myself for the last time. Um, oh, bloody hell, I was actually on fire there. But basically what I was saying, it's an update. I'm gonna to have to repeat myself now. It's an update on the, on the gun here that I'm chasing. And basically what I was saying, while I do this, I'll let a bit more dress dwell. Basically what I was saying is, I've had customers in the last um, few weeks come and have a field test of this gun and the other gun that we're chasing. You've seen it's a bigger, heavier gun. Um, and what I said before was, I will give you my consensus before I give you the customer's consensus because in case you know, you know, I'm not lying. I've always said the 28 has always had, uh, with the gun being turned off, it's easier to showcase, but it's always had the better trigger pull. It's very light. I mean, literally a 90 year old granny can have a play with this. Whereas the other gun is a bit more stiffer. And even with me, I, I wouldn't say I struggled, but I started to feel like um, a bit of cramp in my hands. But again, like with anything, this is why, say, the Ferrari and the Lamborghini game, for example, has got aftermarket shops looking after those cars for performance modifications or even visuals, suspension, stuff like that. Even as good as those cars are, it can still be made better. So the point where I realized um, this was off, this is why, I mean, the MTM fittings are the baseline, not the bottom baseline, the top baseline. So if you're looking for industry standard fittings, so swivels, outlet, uh, couplers, plugs, all that sort of stuff, MTM are amazing, but still they can be made better. So only yesterday I managed to attach my new coupler, so I ripped the MTM one off. And then I put my Swiss machine that made um, out of the gun coupler. So it's a quarter to quarter. So obviously you can take stuff like this for foam cannons. Now this is the first time I'm using it. I didn't know if it was leaking. Obviously, as you can see, it's not leaking. And yeah, that is the update so far that I've got on the gun. It's actually, you know what? It's, it's very strange. I'll, have, I'll actually have to get another gun with a normal outlet to actually show you but this actually has got slightly more flow um, into the gun which is a nice thing especially when I've got the the tips off I can rinse my brushes a lot faster so as you can see the tire is wrecked time to hit this up hopefully three times again like the rear one got hit so yeah, the gun, my my version of the ultimate gun. Um, oh, in fact, you know what? Before I go any further, I've seen some people, I mean, it's, it's fine and stuff to have competition and all this, but some people on their website, I've seen there's a few people and a few companies who are, you know, proclaiming they've got the ultimate gun, which is mass produced. It's available in every reseller. Whereas, for example, this gun is only available through us in the UK and Europe, actually. So, first of all, if you're going to make an ultimate gun package, don't buy something where me personally, I can go into 14 other shops in the UK and buy the same gun. Then they go into the coupler, which is your standard eBay. I know it says stainless steel, but there's different grades of stainless steel. And they go and slap this on here and they go and make a wand or a lance in the UK that is kind of generic. And then they go and piece together, they overprice the gun and say ultimate one kit or ultimate gun and lance kit, which it's not. Um, I've, I've already found the guy, so obviously I, I've been testing this since last year. I've already found the guy who's attempting to, I haven't even launched this thing yet. Jesus Christ, this is how far we're going with this development. I've already seen a guy trying to knock one of these off which it, it's a shame but again what can you do with this not much uh but that is the update on this it has given me a bit more flow 
by the way this part when you get it, it's going to be unbelievable um, another update is we finally saw some Karcher quick connect adapters so to go on the inlet here so rather than having in this case a quick connect configuration we're going to have a Karcher slash nil fist because it's the same fitting uh, so we've sourced them currently I, so today I got the email saying that they've been dispatched which is fantastic so I should hopefully get them in a timely manner but also in between the connection so imagine I take this obviously because it's under pressure I can't take the gun off so once you take the 3 8 male off you have obviously a thread within the, um, the swivel and what I'm struggling to find or I struggled to find was if you look at everybody who's doing some sort of gun variation in a cartridge adapter between the swivel and the cartridge adapter they have to have a male and a male kind of thread one to go into the gun one to go into the connector and everybody's doing brass you know how much I hate brass so what I've done is to make it even better again it's not going to give you any more functionality but it's just in my head it's going to be better it's a cleaner fit and it's a better look so i've gone instead of the brass i've gone stainless to go up stainless to go down into the cartridge adapter and the cost for this one thing honestly it looks like a screw it's it's ridiculous and when you think you've got to add the cartridge adapter obviously the shipping cost and then you've got this thingy i could buy the brass one for pennies pennies and this is like 300 times the price for just to have it stainless but like i said if you're gonna make it the best or say you've got the best you know it has to be so this the stainless mail to mail is also incoming this is from another supplier um i've dealt with this supplier ever since i started pressure washing or uh, moving into the pressure washing kind of scene and obviously I'll never leave them because they're amazing so again this is hit number two I'm going to loosely rinse this off so I don't waste my time I'm going to hit the tire again For some reason, this has taken three hits. Uh, both rear tires are the same. But like I said on my introduction video, this is more kind of rear wheel based. So maybe it's picking up more, more crap off the roads. There we go, see? So anyway, those two. So the moral of the story is car chair. So if you want, if you've got a car chair K-series um, with that stupid plug that they use on the end of their hose it's it's a proprietary one which is so hard to find but anyway once those come in if you've got a cart or if you've got a nil fisk you will now buy the uk rarest gun so the sg28 i won't be stocking any other gun until we find a better alternative um if you've got the karcher or the nil fisk it is gonna you can buy this gun very soon it's gonna be on the website Look at that rubber, it just looks, just even clean, wet. Wait until we dress this thing. So yeah, I've bit the bullet long enough on these guns. I thought, um, kind of, I mean, Karcher, I've got a big market seg segment, the K series, especially in the UK. I know America's slightly different, but this is, you know, a lot of people have asked me, and when the nine millionth person has asked me, can I get your bloody HDS 28 in a car to Nilfus fitment and on the 900th time when I said no I thought right um, I need to sort something out and again like I've always said on videos I have never understood I've googled far and wide I've even ran Karcher this is how ridiculous it is I've run Karcher HQ they send me to some big kind of their distributors in-house distributors around the country those people have never even heard of the stupid adapter or they can't get it so I just it's always frustrated me how sometimes I make things too hard for me I don't know where these people get them like this and every time but then again we've gone to a very trusted kind of source and hopefully they come through we'll, time will tell <laughs>
So yeah, hopefully all you people who've been asking me about the guns and all this on their Karcher K2, K4, K5, K6, uh, I mean K7. So hopefully it's going to come very soon as, as soon as we can get our main man, Andre in, the king of photography. Um, yeah, in fact, me and him have been talking. I need to employ him. It's we're trying to we're trying to figure out the terms. Um, the thing is, he's just had a newborn baby as well. So I mean, you've got to think about. It. He's got a wife, a kid now. It's a, it's a lot of responsibility on mine and Kelly's back. Like ethically, you don't want to be you know doing something that can potentially affect the child of a life i mean it's only been born two two weeks four weeks can't remember but you know basically a new addition to the world so you've got to think long and hard about these things but as soon as we can get him in to take the photos obviously i need to build the guns now so i need to strip down the guns build them in the culture configurator and then if, well i'll just call it the culture configuration and yeah, hopefully they'll be uh, rolling very soon for you guys. So I am listening. I do listen to you guys. I do listen. Um, again, see the wheel. This wheel is not bleeding as heavily, which is still surprising. The front wheels normally are the worst. So obviously now, in fact, you can see just before I move further with the guns. Um, just look at the way this is puffing up so this is again i tell people on normal wheels or normal braking systems that you will never see the secondary part of the formula in this case it's completely flipped on its head so you'll never see the first part of the formula but you see the secondary part i mean just look at the foam is very thick so that's the wheel cleaning multiple degreases that i've inbuilt into this wonderful product um one of our first actually one of our first product lines and when we eventually change this if we ever will i mean we've pumped it with so many raw materials and many different kind of recipes uh it was very hard to get this wheel cleaner stable because we just used to crash out all the time um for many reasons you know stability and volatility and all that sort of stuff but eventually once we hit it on the nail on the head type of thing with this it was just such a mint product i mean you can use it on paint your wheels exhausts bloody anything really but on the heaviest parts it's it's a great product it'll be very hard to actually replicate this or even improve by us to be fair so it'll be interesting when technology like i always say technology is moving always in one direction it's that direction and not backwards so maybe in five years we will find a substitute but then again i never i never bring out a product or i never take a product down and do a v2 unless i know deep down in my heart that you know it's better i don't like to scam people because I'm a firm, I'm a firm believer in the law of attraction. You get back from this life what you put into it. So at the end of the day, I'm sure you've all been there where you go and buy a car from a dodgy dealer, then they go bust and then they kind of pop up again called something else. I believe life will catch up to these people anyway, whether it's an illness or the police come after them or whatever. So this is why I try and just be upfront as much as I can and this is why we don't have that many variations in the product lines because it takes time it takes time and I, the more I do this with Kelly and the more people that become you know on our books and the more people we work with you just realize actually in fact the bigger we get the slower we become <laughs> which actually should work the other way around. But yeah, the guns are coming, the individual parts. I'm not gonna, a lot of people say, you should do this, you should do that. If I listened to everybody, I would have 77 different things 
in the every category, which, um, again, a lot of people don't know what the best means uh, or the most premium kind of style of this, but um, the guns obviously are definitely going to be customized to a V2 now um, with the blessings from MTM, of course. And the only individual part I will ever hold for, for any gun is this the, the the outlet coupler is going to be changed i'm going to give people the option you can buy the the mainstream sgs gun the way it comes i've always said it's an amazing gun but if you really want to go for the ultimate the real ultimate um obviously there's a price to pay for this coupler uh, but i think it's I've, I've always said this, I, I think when I first tried this style coupler last year and I tried, even for the first time, the way it drew back, so the draw and then obviously I've had a few customers who are like engineers or mechanical engineers and they've come in and they were like, bloody hell, like where did you get this from? I want one. So <laughs> the wait's over my friends, obviously the nozzle assembly is coming, which again is a whole different level of quality and kind of the fitting styles that we're gonna have them in can we go on camera together no, no, no. kelly is just done kelly's just done a signature block <laughs> she's just done a new signature <laughs> block and she's she's hiding <laughs> i'm very proud of her you know kelly where's her face one sec she's hiding behind me somewhere there we go <laughs> she She's been working um, all day to do a new signature block, so I'm very proud of her. But I'll cut this here and I'll have a look at right. it. So let's get this puppy um, rinsed down. So again, I'll do a bit of a close-up. Look at this beauty. Wow. So this is the, the coupler that I'm talking about in question. Again, one of our Lancers. Again, the newest V2 Lancer is going to have the interchangeable, so it's going to have another one of these Swiss made couplers on here. And then you're gonna have the nozzle assembly on the end of that as well. And that means when you do want to say pressure wash your floor like this, you can then put a zero degree tip on and you're back in business. So I'm just gonna rinse this down, see what the state of play is. But if you look at the water behavior, it's definitely got something on. It might be like, um, I don't know what to put on the car during the prep stage, but let's see exactly uh, if we can remove it and put our stuff on. So again, we've got a bit of citrus, diluted 15 to one. I'm gonna try and be quite liberal with this all over the paint. But usually, you know, once this car's prepped to our levels, I will probably just do it on the lower kind of quarter or a lower third. But for now, I'm gonna see if I can knock back a bit because it is beaten actually quite well. So we'll be able to tell, has this been coated? I don't think it has. Well, I, I wasn't informed of it. And it's only had one previous owner. So looks like it was a good customer over there. So maybe they would know if it had, but I'm not too sure. So let's um, give it a, a strongest bath on this first one. But obviously, I mean, if it requires stripping, we'll probably implement other kind of products into it. But for now, I'm just giving it a medium level decon bath. It's got flies all over the front. So at least it's been driven a little bit. Yeah, there's definitely something on the windscreen too. Then I know as well, a lot of newer German cars are implementing like a hydrophobic layer on all their glass. Like, you know, on the roof as well. It's like a film almost, or wrap or tint, but it kind of always beads. It's quite cool. So we'll be able to tell. I've also got the foam mixed at uh, 10 to one. My usual dilution ratio. I just want to see I want to clean it first. Again, this is one of these things I can always go heavier with the citrus or the foam, but why start more aggressive if this might just do the trick? 
I know there was a little bit of, I don't know what's in here, it's like a polished residue almost, so I'm going to let that dwell for a bit. And then we can see if we can knock it out with a detailing brush. But hopefully this will, you know, if there is something strange on the paint or alien, we'll be able to have a look. But it's been, it has been sat at the dealership, it's probably been touched, fingerprint marks, so if there's any oils and stuff like that, we'll, we'll be able to tell. So again, like I was saying, you know, it's the same thing with kind of like paint correction. Even if the car needs compounding, try on your test spot, try and do something that is least or, or less aggressive, because you never know, it may work. If it doesn't work, you're gonna, you're gonna bump it up anyway. So it's the same thing with kind of products. Don't waste product unless you know you kind of have to. Well, you're not wasting product. Oh, I don't want this to get on the camera. Um, you're not really wasting product, but you are if, let's say in this case, a 10 to 1, 15 to 1, 20 to 1 dilution ratio is going to work. So why use it neat, for example? So just a little tip I've learned over the years. But I mean, over time as well, I just want to get a feel for this paint first anyway, but I want to eventually just in the next couple of washes off camera, I'm going to give it slowly increase the strength of the washes just to kind of get it back to the most naked finish I can. Because again, you can't clay this car, you can't polish it. So we're going to have to let the products do the talking with this and see what happens. So again, because it's an overcast day, I'm going to try and let this sit on, on the paint as long as humanly possible. Now I've got a brush specifically for the body. Now I'm going to try again avoid contact with the paint where possible because again, because the snow foam is on the car, the car's still dirty. So you've got to be careful when you're doing this. But then I'll carry it around with me, and if I see any spots that I've missed, I can tidy it up when the car's um, kind of clean as well. But again, take over detail. I'm going to flush the arches off camera, kind of continue this step as well. Just to make sure there's no creepy crawlies or any hidden surprises in, in any of the cracks or crevices. But I rarely do this nowadays as well because I wash the cars that often. And again, I use citrus with every wash. So, you know, in terms of mold buildup in the, um, in the window jams, I'm very acute to what it can do if you don't wash your car enough, so hence why the citrus is used at every wash, but then also how often I wash a car, like I've just said, it's paramount to where uh, I don't actually need to do what I'm doing now very often, but because this is a car that I've never kind of touched before, I'll take the extra step. Just to make sure there's no any horrific dress trails you know when you do especially here good sign by the way there's no black being pulled oh, hold on am i speaking too soon a little bit nothing bad i've seen worse in fact my car was worse <laughs> i can remember when i i did this agitation here on my car it was just pulling black this is pulling zero only just a tad Nothing horrific. Uh, the wiper blades, window wipers. Now this is where I've got to be very careful. Don't want to be touching the paint accidentally. Now, like I said, I did notice something here, so I am going to hit this quite extensively. I don't know. I mean, the door handles have been wrapped at our request, but just in case they use like a molding agent, I'm not too sure. 
So I avoided refilming again me using the yum washer as a second layer, but yum washers on here. Got a bit of yum washer in here too. So on this one I've got two mitts I'm gonna use because again I don't know what sort of crunchies are on this car. I'm gonna use a secondary mitt for the lower third of the car just in case. Um, obviously you know I use the same mitt for my cars but that's once they're protected and prepped. See now I can touch the car, it's clean there, but oh my goodness. See? That feels amazing. Now look, I can see a little bit of iron within the paint, which is fine. We'll do a decon in another video, a decon wash. But just, oh, it's weird. I can't describe to you how actual matte paint feels. It feels quite weird. <laughs> so while I was off camera, I flushed the arches. Obviously used citrus and uh, one of our soft brushes in there make sure I loosened or agitated the dirt so obviously in that rinse you would have removed it and obviously in the final rinse the most thorough rinse I always do it'll remove everything so obviously like I said because our detail spray is a gloss enhancing detail spray I will not be using this as a drying aid I've in the meantime in the last couple of months I've been very secretive and I've worked on a V1 of like a non-gloss enhancing spray so we will use that as a drying aid and see what happens in fact while I'm on this third I use the smith Yeah, first wash of a matte car. Or oh, my matte car, let's say. I'd be interested. Again, I never trust any dealers to do any prep work, even on a normal two-stage kind of, you know, car. I feel like a black and cleared car. Even more so with this, because it's a very weird substrate. So I'm going to be interested in rinsing this down putting a bit of our new new stuff on and seeing what happens but this car's definitely got something on definitely it's repelling water extremely well so I'm gonna have to do a bit more digging to investigate so yeah the slickness levels are still the same um, on the yum wash on this kind of paint as it, it normally is on a on a painted surface, like a glossy surface, I'm sorry. So yeah, very interesting. But the good thing is, obviously, even when we when we made the, the version one of the shampoo, or uh, back in 2018, I knew there was a key, a few key features that I didn't want to have in a shampoo in general. So obviously, I didn't know I was going to buy this car in 2018. Uh, I wish I did, because I'd. I would have started developing the products back then, but you know, stuff like no petroleums within the product or no solvents, stuff like that, which again, if you look at any matte specific shampoo, that is one of the presets on those shampoos. And we kind of already, we kind of have already kind of put that into place and obviously no, no protective like products or solvent, uh, no solvents, silicates, polymers, anything like that, waxes. So again, when it's, when I say it's a pure shampoo, it's a pure shampoo. So proof's in the pudding. Look, I'm using it on a matte car. Because again, you don't want to kind of make a matte surface sheeny or glossy, because at the end of the day, that's why realistically you've bought a matte car 
for that specific reason. All right, so I'm gonna finish this panel here and then I'm going to rinse it. Again, I'll probably do it off camera just for time's sake because I've got to keep moving it. Um, and then we'll blow and dry the car off with a new dry nade. Right, so here we go. First time using this for me. Um, we'll see how it goes. So still, if you remember from my towel video, this is my development. So I'm going to test it on this. You might as well while you've got it. And yum detailer. Oh, but it's in orange. So let's see how this goes. Um, so there you go. It's still dispersing the water. Nice. And let's see what happens. Yeah, I can feel contamination through the towel. So we'll have to do a chemical decon. Again, unfortunately, we can't clear this car. Oh, it's leaving no gloss. Yes. No gloss, looking stunning. So what I'm gonna do, just while the towel is still, this is a brand new towel. Well, not brand new, but it's dry. So I'm gonna pre-prime the towel through my, um, like directly into it. Look at that, there's a bit of a streak there. It's coming off. Very nice. Oh, slickness. Ha. Not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, let's see if the camera will, will catch it. So let me do an application of it like this. Just before it runs. So you can see that it's wet and it's just starting to evaporate. It's a self-leveling formula. Oh yeah, beautiful. But then if you don't want to wait, you just do this and it's gone. <laughs> you know, from your angle, wow, it's just that, you know, the sheen, I always talk about the sheen, it's nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just lovely. Let's rock and roll with this. Again, if you are watching this video and you've got a wrap or a factory satin matte finish, same rules apply. You don't want to be hammering the towel into the paint. Same like you would with a normal car. You've just got to take your time and just drag the towel. Let the towel do the work. You know what? This will be a real test over time just to see how much I fall for this color because in real life, honestly guys, when you get the chance just and you're here just if the car's here of course just have a look at it it's just a stunning color i never thought i will enjoy a matte paint car as much as i am now again this is early days so i'm not gonna say too much where in six months time i say ah, i'm selling it but so far i mean i just can't think of any drawback it kind of complements my style quite well I've got one very very shiny car and I've got one that's going to be one very sheeny car um, interesting so I'm trying to give it an even coat on every panel give me enough lubricity so yeah the goal now is um, we're going to develop as much as we can I know there's not that much offering on the market to kind of base against it but I will have to buy them all in I'll try them I think every product usually every premium product that's what I always say there's um, there's always a good point about it and there's usually a downfall again it's opinionated because some people's downfalls or some people's benefits you know someone might say oh it's too shiny or too matte or whatever so I'm going to try and 
use my better judgment to try and make the most complete range for the mat. I mean, spray waxes, waxes is going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to leave this car again the same with like with my car. I'm going to leave it uncoated. So imagine I go for like a matte specific coating. Everything else will become useless then because a coating will kind of inhibit everything. Gloss levels, slickness levels. And basically this won't be a development car anymore. Unless of course I go and coat this car for my own good with my own coating. It'll be a different story then. You know what, this is interesting, this towel. It's, you know, like if you've got a car and you, I mean, it's got something on it, but it's not huge, kind of like a superior product um, as a protective layer, because I know it's beading something, but still this towel is, it just feels, oh. obviously this behaves like every wrap I've, I've dealt with, but, it's just nice, very nice to actually dry. But I'm gonna obviously just dry the ties real quick, dress them, and I'm gonna make a move with Kelly because it is currently 8.45. I'm just starting to see there's a drop in light. Um, haven't eaten since about two o'clock, so I feel like a starved child. I'm gonna get ratty soon. <laughs> Kelly's favorite, unless I eat, of course. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed um, the first matte specific wash video. It's It's been cool for me as well. Obviously the wash pad glides differently across the paint and stuff, so it is quite wicked. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna put some of our new development tie dressing on again. It's a different set of tires, it's a different set of wheels. The car drives differently, so let's see how this holds up on it. And yeah, guys, like I, like I always say, hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, you get to see something new that, again, I haven't even dropped a hint on this because if I did, people would know what sort of kind of car may be coming next. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit chilled out. I, like I said, it's 8.45. I'm starving, I feel sucked in, and hope you've enjoyed this quite lengthy video now, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one with more development and more crazy ideas from me. I'll see you in the next one, guys.